यम ब्रह्मा पुरुनेन्द्र रुद्र मरुता स्तुन्नंति दिव्यी स्तवयी वेदयी संग पदों का मोक्रमो पुनिषदोई गायन्ति यम सामगाहम ध्यान अवस्थित तद्गते नमनसा पश्चन्ति यम योगिनो यस्यंतम नविदुः सुरासुरगना देवायतस्मयी नमः Meditation on the Gita. <clears throat> I salute the Shining One whose praise is sung in diverse hymns by Brahma, Varuna, Indra, Rudra and Maruts, whose glories are proclaimed by the bards in the verses and chapters of the Vedas, whom the yogis see when their minds are absorbed in contemplation and whose limit is not known by the hosts of gods and others. Om Shanti, 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 peace, 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 beautiful. This morning our topic is Thoughts and the Gita, Part 18. We are starting the ninth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Name of the chapter is Raja Vidya Raja Gujja Yoga. Sovereign Knowledge and Sovereign Mystery. Sometimes I ask myself, why should I study Gita or Upanishads or books on Ramakrishna or Vivekananda? My Sanskrit teacher told me, if you stop reading grammar, you will forget it. And if you stop studying logic for a month, you will forget it. You must study daily. That will make your brain fresh. Your life will be fresh. It is extremely important to study something every day. Do you know why? Because human beings live in three planes. Spiritual plane, intellectual plane, physical plane. Most people live in the physical plane. 99% people, or, or maybe, you know, something like that, because they are satisfied with their food, their enjoyment, and all these things. I remember one monk told me, try to stay in a spiritual plane as much as you can. If you can't, come one step down, intellectual plane. Don't stay in the physical plane long period. Just give some food to your body and some what are bare necessities need for your, to maintain your health and body, do that. But don't stay there long. Bhagavad Gita is just like a rajar of our lifeboat. Without a rajar, a boat in the middle of the river moves all around, floats, going nowhere. There's a famous Buddhist saying, being nobody, going nowhere. So, that Raja is very, very important because the boatman, with the help of the Raja, will take you to your destination. Similarly, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is the boatman, ferryman. There is a verse in the meditation section of the Gita, Krishna says, not, not Krishna saying, it is the hymn. Bhishma drona tata jayodrata yala gandhara nilotpala shaila gravati kripe na bhavani karne na vela kula ashatthama vikarna gora makara durjodana vartini sotti na khalu banjavai pranana di koi vartaka keshava. It is a very, very interesting verse. <laughs> With the help of Krishna, the five sons of Panju, 
emerged victorious from the battlefield of Kurukshetra. He acted as a ferryman on the terrifying river of the battlefield, of which Bhishma Drona formed the high banks. Jayadratha, the water, the king of Gandhara, the blue lotus, Shalya, the shark, Kripa, current, Karna, the breakers, Ashwatthama Bikarna, the alligators, and Durjodhana, the whirlpool. So try to think about this river. And if you want to cross this river, you will have to fight. The moment we come out from the womb of our mothers, we shake hands and feet. That means we are declaring war against Maya. That is a protest. <laughs> that is a protest. Human life is full of a struggle. We are fighting every moment against this Maya. But you do not see Maya. I remember. <laughs> Swami Turiyananda told Swami Pavitrananda, why are, do you fight against your own shadows? These are all shadows of Maya. We are, you are actually fighting against yourself. As I said, we do not see Maya, but we see the offsprings of Maya. Six, lust, anger, greed, delusion, ego, and jealousy. These are the six offsprings of our Maya we are all fighting against them. We cannot help it. Sometimes during our life's journey, we feel fatigued, tired, depressed, helpless, lonely, empty. As a result, our life becomes stagnant, moribund. We don't feel anything to do. At the same time, people need excitement. Every day we need something to do. Otherwise, you will not get up from your bed if you have nothing to do. Why should I get up? I have nothing to do. Hey, one of my friends always tell me, Swami, he is now in his mid-80s, real estate man. Swami, every day I make some project so that I have a motivation to move, to do something. I have plenty of money, I have, my life is very successful, but I do not like to be idle. I remember the Mr. Haynes, Vice President of Disney, he worked till the age of 95. He told his friends, don't ask me to retire. This is a creative mind. If I stop working, I shall leave this world very soon. We need excitement. We need some joy. And the Upanishad says, those who are ignorant, they follow the path of prayer, pleasure. What is the path of pleasure? Just good food, wine, sensual pleasures, running after name and fame, and those who are wise, they follow the path of Shreya. It is from the Kato Upanishad. Preya, Shreya. Preya means present, pleasure, pleasant. Immediately it comes joy. A Shreya is good, spirituality, which gives us permanent peace and bliss. Next question, is there any joy in spiritual life? Of course. Is there any joy in worldly life, materialistic life? Of course. Joy is in both places. Matra Upajivanti, Brother Nirgavanesha says, whatever joy you see in this world, it comes from the source, from Brahman. Both worldly joy as well as the spiritual joy. But Krishna answered this question in verse 37, 38 in chapter 18. Agre Bishamiva 
পরিণামে অমৃত পমা অগ্রে অমৃত পমা পরিণামে বিষমিত হি আনসার ওল্ডলি জয় ইন দি বিগিনিং ইটস হ্যাজ লাইক সুইট নেকটার ভেরি হ্যাপি বাট আউটকাম ইন দি এন্ড ইট ইজ ভেরি পেইনফুল লাইক পয়জন স্পিরিচুয়াল জয় ইন দি ভেরি বিগিনিং ইট ইজ ভেরি পেইনফুল বাট ইন দি এন্ড ইট ইজ এক্সট্রিমলি ব্লিসফুল পারমানেন্ট দি ফার্স্ট জয় ইজ মোমেন্টারি সেকেন্ড জয় ইজ পারমানেন্ট so most people are deluded my maya so they go for instant momentary happiness krishna does not even is help in interest so he is telling us the truth he loves us wants us to be happy happy i remember a man came to me in hollywood at the time i was there he was a very successful engineer he invested 50000 pesos in in mexico and lost everything i got it. the market went down he came and broken hearted almost got nervous breakdown i told him show me tell me what shall i do I told him, "You are a very successful man. You will make money. Some money may come back. The market fluctuates always. But for the for the for the at present, I can tell you a medicine which will work. You buy a copy of the Gita and the Gospel of Ramakrishna. In the morning, you read one chapter of the Gita every morning. It will take take ten to fifteen minutes." to the first chapter next the second chapter in this way you go 18 chapters again you come back again you start in this way you rotate and every night before you go to bed you read four pages of the gospel of ramakrishna and come and see me after two weeks he came and say shami it works i have now peace of mind i was really very much disturbed i'm just telling you that whether this scriptures have any effect or not in human life it has anyhow <clears throat> we shall start with verse 15 as i told you in the very beginning this chapter is rajo vidya rajo gujya yoga In the seventh chapter of the Gita, Krishna mentioned all these things. You see, I am dwelled in in the water, in the fruits, in the trees, in human beings, in everywhere I dwell. And do you know what? All these human beings just like pearls tied with a string. I am that string. Sutra moni gona ibo. Sutra means thread. Moni means gems, pearls. So all these beings you see, they are like pearls. and i am that connecting link of all these beings that means pure consciousness so all these four five billion human beings you see are conscious that consciousness is god according to vedanta so rajavidya rajagujya means mystery of the nature of god so krishna is the real i love him. the person we love we want to unveil ourselves to that person i sometimes see some marriage people i say do you know how much your husband makes i know i know he has his own bank bank account i have his my own bank account bank account i don't know what is going on in him he doesn't know what is going on in me the dunya the full trust that kind of marriage does not last long you must open yourself which is very very important trust other you know what which is hard to leave all the time you are you are cultivating some doubt some suspicion 
your life is miserable the other the other person's life is miserable how important it is to have this openness that krishna says you know i just gave a hint in the seventh chapter <coughs> but this chapter i am unveiling myself to you because i love you it is a very important thing to know the <coughs> everything about the beloved how does it go here is a person <clears throat> i know that person is a doctor i know that person's name i know that person married have children i know his home i know he is a very successful doctor makes so much money i know everything about his outside that is called gyanam that is called knowledge of a particular person what is vigyanam his samskaras his tendencies his what is that person's true nature consciousness god dwells in him that i do not know that is called vigyanam you have seen milk you have tasted milk you wrote a book on milk but you have never tasted milk if you drink milk you will get nourishment that is vigyanam you taste milk you have seen milk but you have never drunk milk that is called vigyanam please try to understand it is extremely important one is only indirect knowledge which we learn from the books and the guru and direct knowledge comes from experience that vedanta teaches experience have some experience try practice according to the instruction of your guru you will get the experience it is bound to come so raja guj krishna is telling in this chapter i shall unveil my whole mystery to you so that you can know me my inside my outside and second raja vidya raja vidya means it is a royal sovereign knowledge when you have this knowledge you will be liberated you will be free and i shall tell you how this knowledge can be attained in a very easiest way that krishna is going to tell in this chapter to arjuna i shall tell you my whole mystery my insight to you which because onashuya you are my you are free from hatred jealousy you have all great qualities you are very truthful you are a great hero you are my cousin you are my disciple you are my friend i shall expose everything to you and i shall tell you how to attain me quickly so you come easily so this chapter is very very important now let us start the <coughs> verse 15 ज्ञानजोगीन चैचाप्यन्ने यजंत मामुपासते एकत्वेन पृथक्तेन बहुधा विश्वतो मुखम अदर्स टू सैक्रिफाइसिंग बाय द यज्ञ ऑफ नॉलेज दैट इज सीइंग द सेल्फ इन ऑल वर्शिप मी द ऑल फॉर्म एज वन एज डिस्टिंग एज मैनिफोल्ड इन द प्रीवियस वर्स ही सेज there are some people they worship me out of devotion with devotion he talked nobhavida bhakti nine kinds of devotion you can adopt here he is going to tell gyanu jigyana through knowledge also you can get me what is that knowledge vasudeva sarvam iti krishna is all this whole world all beings are nothing but krishna all pure consciousness this is his cosmic form those who are brahmins they see god in the fire because they perform the rituals those who are yogis they try to see god in their heart 
those who are ignorant people they see god in the images stone images wooden images and those who are gyani they see god in every beings everywhere ज्ञान यज्ञ सेक्रीफाइस ऑफ नॉलेज दिस सब्जेक्ट केम अप फॉर डिस्कशन इन द फोर्थ चैप्टर आल्सो एक अत्यना पृथक तेना आई द रियलाइजिंग वननेस विद ऑल or by realizing the separateness of god from human beings and becoming servant of god that is the sense of prithakatva the bhakta takes god as a separate and himself as he, herself as a jibuti worshiping jiva you are a jibuti of kali so you see my god is only in kali that is ekottena in jibujuri i am worshiping god jesus is my god or buddha is my god एक पृथक तेन मीन्स आई सी गॉड इन बुद्ध कृष्ण ब्राह्मा राम कृष्ण ऑल ह्यूमन बींग्स आर गॉड दैट इज गॉड पृथक तेन इन इन ऑल वे सी दैट इज गॉड ज्ञान जिज्ञ दैट ही इज सींग गॉड इन एवरीथिंग एंड एवरी बींग Do you know what jigya means? Jigya means sacrifice. We are continually sacrificing. You cannot live in this world without sacrifice. <coughs> Here is a man who works twelve hours a day. Has some heart problem. Still he works. for whom he is sacrificing his health his comfort his everything for his wife for his children for his family it is a great sacrifice wife is also sacrificing herself serving husband taking care of the children if you watch carefully you will see a great sacrifice is continuously going on that person becomes great who sacrifices is great christ krishna ramakrishna their sacrifice is maximum they never do anything for themselves they do everything for others that is called true sacrifice you know sometimes i watch this thing that sacrifice those who are maximum sacrifice their names will be recorded in the history you be ordinary people our names are not in the history because we do not have much sacrifice we are very selfish limited sacrifice very interesting gyan ji ga swami ji wrote a poem to a friend the first last four lines of that poem is very vital he was telling this the the beloved lord dwells from brahma the creator up to the little worm so you see all these living gods my friend you offer your mind your energy your body and serve them living this living gods why are you searching god here and there जीवे प्रेम करे जे जन से जन से भी चीज ईश्वर इफ यू लव सर ह्यूमन बींग्स दैट इज अ ग्रेट वर्शिप दैट इज ऑल्सो सैक्रिफाइस दैट स्वामी जी मेन्शन वन जे श्याम श्री रामकृष्ण आस्ट विवेकानंद हियर इज ए कप ऑफ सीरप 
and you are an ant. How will you drink that syrup? Tell me. Shamiji says, I shall sit on the brink of that cup and slowly, slowly sip it. Sri Ramakrishna says, why don't you jump into that syrup and drink? Oh, no, sir, then I shall die. The moment the ant falls into the syrup, the ant dies, radiant. Sri Ramakrishna says, my son, my child, those who jumps into the ocean of Satchidananda, they never die. They become immortal. What a great lesson Sri Ramakrishna gave to Swamiji. Sacrifice. You go to the temple, what do you do? You carry some fruits, some bananas, some fruits, some sweets, and offer to the Lord. That is sacrifice. That is called Dred Gajigya. I am offering to the Lord, Lord, please bless me. But Gyanva Jigya is higher than Dred Gajigya. That objects, offering to the objects, and you are offering your heart, your soul to God. That is higher. Namo Jigya, chanting God's name, Gyanva Jigya. Sarva Karma Khilam Partho Gyanva Padipa Shamat Pati. All actions end in the knowledge. Next verse. Aham krutu aham yajna Swada aham aham aushadham Mantra aham aham evajyam Aham agni raham hutam I am the krutu. I am yajna. I am the shoha. I, the onu... On, on, Aushada, I am the mantra, I am the ajya, I am fire, and I am the oblation. Kurtu, Kurtu means Vedic karma, Vedic sacrifice, which is very elaborate, very expensive. Nowadays, seldom we find with this Vedic sacrifice. What do they do? What is the purpose of that sacrifice? Heaven. I want to go to heaven. And I want celestial joy. That is the goal of that sacrifice. And worldly prosperity. I will be very successful in this world. So these are the called Vedic sacrifice. Kurutu. Aham Yajna. Yajna means the sacrifice which has been enjoined by the scriptures. Other scriptures. There are various kinds of sacrifice. Shwada means sacrifice to the ancestors. Shwaha means sacrifice to gods. Oushadam, medicine. Krishna says, I am also the medicine which preserves people, saves people from disease. I am the mantra which saves souls. Ajyam, Ajyam means purojash. Cakes, all these things they used to offer. Aham Agni, I am the fire. Why do you pour these fire things? Hutam, I shall, the, I am the action. It, it is I who manifest as the various ingredients of worship and sacrifice. They are all one and the same reality. I am the sacrifice. I am everything. Perhaps you have noticed that before lunch or dinner, we repeat a <clears throat> verse from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4. Brahma Arpanam, Brahma Abhir, Brahma Agnu, <coughs> Brahma Nautam, Brahma Ivati Nagantaityam, Brahma Karma Samadina. The offering is Brahman, the one who offers is Brahman, the fire is Brahman, the result is Brahman, everything is Brahman, the person who looks these things as Brahman, he attains Brahman. That is the verse. <coughs> What is the bottom line? God is everything. And in everything. When we have this Brahma Drishti, outlook about God, that God dwells in everything, then your whole life will change. Example, a street girl was 
on the sidewalk of Calcutta, Sri Ramakrishna was going by horse carriage. He saw that girl and said, Mother, you are here in this form. You do not see, I do not see. You see she is a prostitute. I see she is a prostitute. And Sri Ramakrishna says she is the Divine Mother who is on the sidewalk. That is called Brahma Drishti. His whole outlook changes. Inside changes. That when you see all these things, for the reason, look, a young boy was tearing the leaf of a flower tree. And one Swami was watching him. Hey, come here. Did you tear this, that leaf from the tree? Yes, I did. If I tear your ear and break it, how do you feel? I shall simply pull your tear ear and break it. How will you feel? In the same way the tree felt. That is called Brahma Drishti. When people are walking on the green grass in Dakshinisha, Sri Ramakrishna said, oh, they are walking on my chest, I get pain. I used to watch a Swami in Balloon Mat, who was a Pujari. After the Vesper service, in summer time, he used to take a napkin, a little weight napkin, very, not fully weight, just a moist napkin. He used to go near the marble image of Dakshineshwar, of Sri Ramakrishna, and he used to clean his eyes, his mouth, his nose, his head, with that. The way he used to rub that thing, I think he is seeing a Paras Ramakrishna living. Because whole day the image was there, if there is any dust there, he cleans it. The way, really it is worth seeing, I tell you frankly. To him, Ramakrishna was living. In your home, cooking pots, please, Dubnam, don't throw that way. Gently. Gently. You know, sometimes we are so careless, you know. We do not feel that, you know, that, 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 that's one young monk threw away the broomstick in the courtyard in Jairambaji. Holy Mother said, what do you mean? Bow down to that broomstick. That broomstick serving this house. It doesn't take the throw away, the, the time is late, it takes this, if you gently put in that corner where the broomstick is supposed to be, it takes the same time. Why do you throw away that way? Those things we will have to learn. In your home, whenever in kitchen, in home, in the, everything should be gently and properly. That means you have a feeling, they are also serving you, your bed. Your bathroom, they are all serving you. Your kitchen, they are serving you. They must be treated with respect. That is called Brahma Bhagavad Gita. Respect. And if you respect others, you will be respected. Always remember. These things we learn from the Bhagavad Gita. It is very practical Vedanta. The same energy, the totality of it exists, nothing is added to it, nothing is taken out of it, but it is manipulated in different ways. So this is the idea of absolute unity. From the one the universe has come, unto the one the universe will return. This is the truth of in Vedanta long ago, and in essence by modern science in our time. This is the Advaitic vision, as I was telling you, Brahma Drishti, Advaitic vision. We see our oneness with everything. We feel our oneness with nature also. If we treat it as separate, we try to exploit it. We try to destroy it. 
But when we know we are all essentially one, we know how to treat nature in a beneficent way. That is what is lacking in today's civilization. In older civilizations, we had this concept, our intimate relationship with nature, and we are now trying to gain that understanding once again in modern Western culture. Don't hurt others. As recently, I found a little passage about Holy Mother from a disciple of Mother. Somebody asked that, Swami, what, what, what did you see in the Mother? That Swami told me, Ma kauke mune koschudiye kotha bolte partenna. Holy Mother never hurt anybody using heart-rending words. That he told me. Never hurt people. Next verse. Pita maisya jagato mata dhata pita maha vedam pavitra mankara riksamo jodhudei vacha. I am the father of this world, the mother, the sustainer, the grandfather, the one things to be known, the purifier, the syllable alone, and also the Rik Shaman Jojus. I am all this first Pita Aham Oisra Jagatu. I am the father of this universe. The fatherhood of God you can see in Judaism, Christianity, and also in Islam. Mata. I am also the mother of the universe, God as the mother. Mata that you will find only in Indian religion and in primitive religions. Dhata is the one who sustains. Then Pitamaha, grandfather, that means Brahma, the creator. Vedam Pavitra Mankara, I am the one truth to be known, the purifier, and I am the own. If you try to know anything in this world, that knowledge will eventually take you to the Supreme Divine. Trace all these various entities in the universe to the root, and you will see God or Brahman there. Very interesting. Do you know what he was talking about? Eko vijnane sarva vijnanam bhavati iti. If you know one, you know everything. If you know clay, you know all modifications of clay. Pots, pans, cups, dishes, vases, all made of clay. But different forms, different names. If you know gold, you know all modifications of gold. Necklace, bracelet, rings, earring, nose ring, all these things, all made of gold. Past no gold. That Vedanta teaches. If you know gold, you know all modifications of gold. If you know clay, you know all modifications of clay. That is called eco. Knowing one, everything can be known. First know God. Then you will know everything. Vedam Pavitra Mungara Rik Shama Jujudevacha. You must know the Vedas. But Swami, Vedas means, you know, some spiritual knowledge. Why? Do you know why? Look what happens. If you read the Puranas, you will find from the very beginning of creation, this Vedas, this knowledge came from the four mouths of Brahma. And the four Vedas came. So Vedas means culture, spiritual culture. Without the spiritual culture, do you know what will happen? We are like animals. Think of this person as a very successful man, lot of money, big home, many cars, wife, children. Only he goes, buys food from the snoop market, eats and sleeps, and watches television, that's. That is the whole life. No study, no spiritual life, nothing, no culture, no art, no literature. Just eat and sleep. 
and have sensual enjoyment. That's all. That Mahabharata says and our scripture says, Gyane na hi na oshubhi samana ha. Aharo nidra bhaya me moithinancha oshubhi samanam. Ahar, we eat, animals eat. We sleep, animals sleep. We beget children, animals beget children. We have fear, they have fear. Among these four aspects, there is no difference between man and animals. How important it is to preserve consciousness. So sometimes I ask people, buy some books, keep in your house, let the children read, encourage them, study, study. That is the way you can maintain your culture. Culture, you know, it will, it will keep your mind above the mundane plane, intellectual plane, mental plane, spiritual plane. That shows that you are a very polished, civilized person. That is the way you must train your children too. Oh, some business, I mean, they let them select their own religion. I shall not teach anything. Are you? The moment they are grown up, they are peers pressure and all these things, they are imitating other people. They will take drugs and go to the wrong direction. At that time, you will cry. From the very beginning, if you do not teach, it will not work. I am just telling you that how important it is to maintain culture in, in a home. I sometimes go to somebody's home and check what kind of books they have. I, I watch people's bookshelf. <laughs> I know what kind of study they do, you know. So, so I am telling the truth. <laughs> if I go to your home, I shall see your bookshelf. <laughs> this next verse is very, very interesting. It was the favorite verse of Swami Turiyananda. Goti Bharta Prabhu Shakshi Nivaja Sharanam Shurit Prabhava Pralaya Sthanam Nidhanam Bijam Abhayam. I memorize this verse for one reason. Because this verse will save you from worries and anxieties of your life. That is the reason I memorized it. Sometimes we suffer from worries and anxieties, uncertainties, what will happen, these and most of the things, you know, think of that a lot of time we spend for this. Worries and anxieties, thinking about the future, what will happen, these, you know. What will happen, that will happen. What will not happen, that will not never happen. It's chinta, worries, anxieties, as like poison. It kills us. So this verse, if you memorize and practice, you will find you will be free from worries and anxieties. Let me explain to you. The goal, the supporter, the Lord, the witness, the abode, the refuge, the frame, the origin, the dissolution, the substratum, the storehouse, the siege immutable. I am that. Krishna says, look, Try to know me fully, not partly. Goti. Goti means goal. Again, Goti means karma follow data. I am the dispenser of the result of action. So that word is very important. I work. Who gives the result of my action? God. No, no, Swami, I get my own result. I get the examination, I did well, but no, no, no. That, don't think that way. Let me give an example. You are a farmer. You till the ground, you sow the seed, no rain. You will not get the crop. That rain comes by the grace of God. We, we shall, the next verse, it will, it will tell us. Then Bharta. Bharta means Supporter, nourisher, who nourishes us. God, how? By giving heat, by giving us water, rain. 
the president or the king do not make air or water all these things it comes from god bharta think of that if there is no water we will all die nourishes food who creates food through the nourishing which is god bharta prabhu prabhu means lord he is the controller he controls my mind my tendencies he is continuously controlling me from inside antarjam indwelling self my mind says you know one some here is a person he says i shall rob this person from inside the mind says do not rob you will go to jail i am just telling you how these things work prabhu the indwelling self is controlling us that is the reason he is called antar jami antar means inner jami means jamun kare mane he is controlling sitting inside saving us from wrong direction goti bharta prabhu sakshi sakshi means witness he is continuously watching our good and bad you cannot hide anything from god not only physical things your your mem mind everything is one continuously is watching as the mother watches the baby all the time similarly god is watching us sakshi nibasha nibasha means <coughs> भोगस्थान पृथ्वी गॉड से आई एम योर होम निवास इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लिव इन दिस वर्ल्ड यू नीज अ होम गॉड से आई एम योर होम यू लिव इन मी शरणम आई एम योर प्रोटेक्टर शरणम There is a famous verse of Tulsi Das. Yo yaak ko sharon liye so rakhe ta ko laj ulaj jale mushli jale bahu jaye ko jaraj. A fish takes refuge in the water because the water is the home of a fish. So the fish can go to the against current. This current, this current, it reaches its home. It can go in all directions. A tiny fish, and here is a big elephant. When the big elephant falls into the water, because water is not the elephant's home, so, shh, taken away by the current of the water, he cannot go and cannot save himself from the current of the water. But the fish can. So it is a beautiful verse. Similarly, if you take refuge in God, He will protect you. He is always protecting. Look, when Swami Ji came to America in Detroit, some missionaries tried to poison him. They put poison in the coffee. Swami Ji was about to drink. Sri Ramakrishna appeared before him and said, "Don't drink it. There is poison." Sri Ramakrishna protected, saved Swami Ji's life many times. Sharanam, because I have taken refuge in you. Now it is your job to protect me. Sharanam, Shurit. Shurit means bondu, friend. He to carry. I am always your well wisher. Krishna says, "I am God. I am always your well wisher. I am your friend." You know, in human life, I tell you frankly. Sometimes when I when I used to interview people. In Hollywood, I was asked, "Do you have any friend with whom you can just open your heart and talk everything?" Oh no, Swami. If I open my heart, somebody may exploit me, somebody may use me. I cannot open my heart to everybody. You know, it is very hard for me. You must have a friend with whom you can release the burden of your eyes, th- of your heart. That is saying. It happened in Dakshineshwar. A boy, very impure, came to Sri Ramakrishna when he was lying down, and the moment he touched Sri Ramakrishna's feet, he cried out, "Oof, pain! Why did you touch me?" 
Sri Ramakrishna could see you, that person inside. Mm-hmm. Tell me what wrong did you do to your life? He could not tell anything. Sri Ramakrishna said, if you do not trust me, go to the Mother Ganges and confess of your guilt. Mother will purify you, release you from the sin. He did not go. Sri Ramakrishna gave him, gave him a chance, an option, but he did not avail that chance. I'm just telling you that how important it is to have a good friend in life. Krishna says, if you do not have any friend, make God your friend. Then, Prabhava Pralaya Sthanam. Prabhava means source. Pralaya means dissolution. Prabhava, Prabhava means creation. Pralaya means dissolution. Sthanam means sustenance. That means God is the Srishti Siti Laya Karta. God is the creator, preserver, and destroyer of the universe. So we are born in this world, that is, and we are staying in this world, and then we merge, we come from God, we stay in this world, that is God, this is his playground, and then we merge, we dissolve into God at the time of death. So Krishna says, I am Prabhava, I am the source, I am the sustainers, I sustain everything, and then I am the sthanam, sthanam, and then pralaya, then I am the place of dissolution. Then Nidhanam. Bijam. Nidhanam means storehouse. When all beings die, where do they go? They go in the storehouse. But I am also God. I am the storehouse of whole creation. Storehouse. A Bijam. Seed. You have a seed, I am a seed. Seed means subtle body. You have a, all these people, you see, everybody has a subtle body. So that subtle body reincarnates. So I am that seed. They are recycled. And abhayam, immutable seed. You know, ordinary seed in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the field, they die, again they grow, they die and grow, but this seed is immutable, undying. So now when you read this verse, now you can imagine. There is nothing in this world except God. He is the Goti, He is my goal. He is my nourisher. He is my Lord, controller. He is the witness of all my actions. He is my home abode. He is my refuge. He is my friend. A creation, preservation, my coming, going, everything, all God. <laughs> I am the storehouse. I am the seed. Everything is God. If you think this way, then why should I worry? My friend, God will protect me. It is a very beautiful verse. Shakshi Chaitanya. I shall tell you a Sufi story. The Sufi teacher was very fond of his one student, and the other students became very jealous. So the other students told him, that why do you, you know, very partial to that person? The guru did not answer. He brought some chickens and gave to each disciple. You cut the head of chicken in a place so that nobody can see. He gave chicken to all of his disciples. So they went out and saw around, some went to the bushes, some went to the behind many of these saw nobody is seeing. So cut the neck of the of the chicken and brought to the guru. But the disciple he loved most, he did not come. In the evening he came back with the live chicken. What is the matter? Master. 
You asked me to kill the chicken where nobody can see. But every time I tried to kill, I saw God was see, watching me. So I could not kill it. So I brought the live chicken to you. You say nobody should see, but I saw God was watching me, seeing me. So I bring, I brought back to you. Then the guru told the other students, did you see why I love him most? This is the reason. You boys killed the chicken, but he could not kill because he saw God was watching. That is a beautiful story, you know. I, I shall never forget that story. God is watching us all the time. Another person had, had a lapse. He was a devotee of Latu Maharaj, Shami Adbhuta Ananda. Latu Maharaj, and you know, when a person commits sin, you will find he cannot see you eye to eye. He always, you know, bends his head down. So he came to Latu Maharaj, and he was talking to Latu Maharaj, bending his head down. So Latu Maharaj was trying to lift him up. My boy, what is done is done. God was everything what you have done. Now come back. Practice spiritual disciplines. You will be free from that guilt. Still he could not raise his head. Then he said, do you know how it works? When you try to do anything wrong, first time, your shame to try to say, hey, don't do that. Shh, shh. Don't break your shame. Your indwelling self talks to you, but you don't listen. Then you made a mistake. Then again you feel, feel, you feel terrible. Guilt. Again you make mistake. Guilt. Slowly, slowly the guilt feeling goes away and you become a totally wreck, sinner. He was explaining that how people fall from one step to down, one after another. Then he says, what is, what is, what happened that is over? Start your journey again. When the child falls on the ground and if he, when he learns, when a little baby learns how to walk, if he falls once, that doesn't mean that his life is over. The child rises again and again, and mother holds the two hands and says, walk, walk, walk. That is the way we learn walking, holding mother's hand. So many times we fell, we don't remember. And every time mother lifted us up, that is Bhagavad Gita, that is Krishna. Is stealing. I shall rescue you. Nami Bhakta Pranashwati, my Bijabuchi never, never perishes. You, you will tell in this chapter of the Gita. I shall protect my Jabuchis. Anyhow, this verse is very, 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 very interesting verse. <coughs> All right, up to this tonight. Today, verse 18. Thank you very much. Um, Tumiva Mata Chapita Tumiva Tumiva Bandusha Saka Tumiva Tumiva Vidha Dravinam Tumiva Tumiva Sarva Mama Deva Deva Look, thou art my mother, thou art my father. Thou art my friend, thou art my companion. Thou art my wealth, thou art my learning. Thou art my all in all, O Lord. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, 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 Bhantur. 